Hello and welcome to this series of videos on how to design a model railway layout. Now a lot of people make it sound very simple. They decide what they want to build and they build it. And for most small and simple layouts that's fine because builders tend to use methods that they've used before, uh, construction methods, electrical methods, that kind of thing. And they have a vision in their mind of what actually they want to build. I'm going to build a Great Western Terminus, or I'm going to build part of a main line, or a loco shed, or an industrial scene. It comes together quite quickly. But when you're coming together to build a large layout, the process is somewhat different. Now I came across this problem of designing a model railway layout about 10 years ago, when the wife and I decided that we would start to hang up our boots and retire to the seaside, something we did actually at the back end of last year. As part of that retirement to the seaside process, it struck me that it would have not been an ideal opportunity to buy a house that allowed me to build my perfect model railway layout. Who wouldn't want to do that? But it did get me thinking as to what the perfect model railway looked like. Now it's going to be different for me, it's going to be different for you. But what does the perfect model railway look like? It took me about 18 months to realise that actually what I needed to do was to design a process by which I could then design my perfect layout. Because frankly, I didn't really know where to start. So this series of videos is going to be about how I went about designing my perfect layout. And I'm going to put that caveat in right at the front. This is my design of my layout. It's going to be different for you. You're going to design something totally different. But the process by which I went through to get to the end result, hopefully, will be of some use to you if you're building your own perfect layout. So let's have a think about what that process looked like. So let's talk about the various aspects and stages of designing a model railway layout. We start with the vision. What actually is it that you're trying to achieve? How do you know that you have been successful? Now, for a simple layout, this is quite straightforward. And for many people, when they're putting their layout design together, they skip straight over this because they know exactly what they're aiming for. But on a larger layout, or for a concept like my perfect layout, it requires a bit more thought. The conceptual design is a highfalutin title for something that is really quite simple. Are you going end to end, roundy roundy, combinations, whatever? I'll talk about that in the second video. Then there are three elements that really act together. The track plan, the controlled and electrical design, and the operational design. These three inform each other and are informed by the other two. If you change one, you're likely to be altering the other two, or one of the other two, certainly. And then we get on to the hard nails of building the baseboards, portable, permanent, whatever. And finally, the scenic design. The scenic design is probably the wooliest. We, we scribble a few lines on our track plan for hills and trees, but in reality, most of us make it up as we go along when we're building the layout. So there you go. They are the steps through which you would work to get to your model railway design. If you're building a small, simple layout, you still go through them. You probably don't realise you're going through them, but we all do it. Over the next uh, few weeks or so, I'll try and get videos out on each of those aspects to show you what I mean, expanding out on each of those titles. So stick with me. Uh, if you're self-isolating or social distancing or whatever aspect of life you're enjoying at the moment, stay safe and I'll see you soon.